Thank you to everyone who's, who is tuned in to our webinar. We're going to go ahead and get started. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to join our webinar about digital transformation in discrete manufacturing. I'm your moderator, Nick Azad, and I just wanted to take a moment to say that although today's discussion will reference solutions deployed in a discrete assembly operation, many of the things discussed also apply to batch and continuous operations, as well as a variety of industries. Now today, I have the pleasure of speaking with not only my colleague, Corey Bodvarka, our manufacturing expert and resident lean Six Sigma Black Belt, but also two gentlemen, Kyle Matson and Andy Osk, who are members of Premier System Integrators, a Parsec certified gold level partner. Kyle, Andy, would you care to share a bit about yourselves? Hey, good afternoon and good morning to folks on the line. This is Kyle Matson. I'm just excited to share some of our content with you today around discrete manufacturing and, and some lean stuff. This is Andy Osk. I uh, hope you benefit from our stories and demonstration here today. Excellent. Well, it is a pleasure to have you gentlemen joining us. To quickly bring everyone up to speed on who Parsec is, we've been in business for over 30 years with a dedicated focus exclusively on developing manufacturing operations management software, which you may hear us abbreviate MOM. Our Traxxas solution platform is designed to measurably help our customers without the need for disruption and major infrastructure overhaul. Traxxas has been deployed in thousands of locations in over 100 different countries. We've helped customers in a variety of industries, ranging from food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, CPG, and aerospace, to name a few, to significantly improve their manufacturing operations. Now, based out of Nashville, Premier System Integrators has been around just as long. With offices in Alabama and Ohio, they've helped to complete over 11,000 projects. Their most recent Traxxas implementations were for Jack Daniels and L'Oreal. As before, we reached out to a handful of our customers in advance of this webinar to get a gauge on common issues around discrete manufacturing, as well as topics of interest. To address the information, we will begin by discussing the challenges we heard, follow that up with a premier-led demonstration of how Traxxas helps to solve those issues, and then end with an open Q&A session. So, Andy, I want to direct this first question to you. Uh, in starting your manufacturing role in the panel shop, what was the process you used to define and prioritize your requirements? Well, thank you. Uh, I, uh, I just started uh, in my manufacturing operations role at the beginning of 2018, and I began by assessing business performance, looking first at our safety, then quality, and then customer service, and our uh, profitability. And as I assessed those, I saw the two areas of greatest need uh, being improvement in our quality and our financial performance. Um, next, I spent time with our leadership and key uh, technicians and just interviewed them to look for their pain points and understand what was, what was causing them uh, hardship and difficulty on a day-to-day -day basis. And then really look for intersections between those performance uh, problems as well as those pain points. And what I found was um, we had a theme of quality complaints from our customers that were actually some repeat issues getting out. Um, we had significant amount of time spent in pre-manufacturing to load existing systems, spreadsheets, compiling job paperwork. Um, this was in part driven by customers increasing traceability requirements. For us, um, from our customers, it was really negatively impacting our profitability, and we really weren't get, having the ability to pass that full cost along to our customers. Um, mm -hmm. The, the pre-manufacturing work also negatively impacted our lead times. Um, another thing that came out was our technicians uh, complained that they really didn't have visibility to how they were performing. They wanted to know, am I doing a good job? They want to feel uh, understand that when they went home for the day. And uh, lastly, you know, in, in related to our quality complaints, it was clear that we didn't have the proper visibility of our inspections, the proper um, accountability uh, for our supervision to be able to ensure that it was being done consistently. 
Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds like there's a theme in that there was high uh, labor content. So how did you approach that issue? Well, um, you know, we were falling behind and failing to complete quality tasks uh, with the current staffing levels. So, you know, the the uh, obvious thing to do is really to add people, but that would negatively impact our profits. And so what we needed is to error proof our processes uh, and our tasks with the resources that we had. We needed a method and a system that could simplify the job of supervision and quality. Uh, and so that they could be more efficient and we needed a system that we could grow into. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So Kyle, uh, I want to turn this over to you now. So Andy's been talking about removing paperwork and I want to know how has that been received by the manufacturing team through commissioning? That's a, that's a very good question, Nick. So, you know, in the process of digitization, we wanted to move towards error proofing these processes as much as possible. You know, Andy spoke a little bit into, you know, the needs and the, the mistakes that were being made. So mm -hmm. we immediately started in and we started to receive feedback that it was much easier to use Traxxas in, in this digital interface than it was the old paper version. So in the process of pokeyoking all these inspections and, and commissioning, we actually came across a couple other items along the way. And this was, critical for us because what we found was a traceability log. And in this case, it was the underwriter's laboratory log that we use for our electrical panel builds. So once we found that, we, we got a little bit more deeper into those requirements and figured out what we needed to implement. And once we got that all in place, we actually had team leaders coming back and praising the software and trying to identify more things that they could get added into Traxxas. <laughs> That's great to hear. Um, so where would you say you've seen the biggest impact so far? Yeah, so three things come to mind and I'm gonna elaborate on each one. So first, we had three different people covering the pre-manufacturing tasks that took an average total of about 20 hours per week. With Traxxas, we were able to feed those projects directly to the technicians through their tablet interface using Traxxas. So in that, we were able to eliminate preparing and printing all that inspection and traceability paperwork, reduce the schedule communication that was going on manually, and basically completely remove compiling and delivering those folders out to the value streams. So with all that said, that only left the physical UL label preparation step in that pre-manufacturing work content that Andy was referring to. So all these changes brought about an hour per job down to five minutes per job. So quite a significant reduction. Uh, the, the second item was our job labor recording. So our old process had technicians writing down their time information, um, writing in notebooks, spare pieces of paper, and then entering all that information into our ERP system at the end of the week. That process, we, we just tended to be fraught with inaccuracies, and it took an average of about an hour a week per technician. So quite a bit of time spent there. We also weren't aware of how they were performing on jobs until a week after that work had been done. So going from an hour, we were able to get that down to less than 10 minutes per person after we were able to implement Traxxas. The third impact and the final one I wanna talk about is around our quality. So Traxxas gave us the ability to enforce some business rules on the inspection entries so that not only were the inspections and specific tasks completed, they were never overlooked. So this resulted in a steep decline in customer quality complaints, and Andy can probably attest to that. Well, thank you, Andy and Kyle, for sharing how you got started with your, your manufacturing assessment and defining the requirements for your digital transformation. A lot of companies really are challenged on how to get started, so it's very helpful to hear about the, the process that you guys used to get going. Before we jump in the demonstration, I want to start with a little background on the architecture of the Traxxas MOM platform. Traxxas uses a real-time logic service to communicate with automation on the plant floor and a data management service to communicate with third-party third -party business systems like ERP, WMS, CMMS, just to name a few. This allows Traxxas to provide its users 
actionable intelligence and enable executing tasks and workflows across the value stream. Information is provided through any web interface. This allows users to interact with user interfaces and further contextualize data as they carry out manufacturing and business processes. As I mentioned, Traxxas can be accessed through any web interface. Since it's built on HTML5, it's responsive to a variety of mobile devices. By enabling mobility, it allows executives, managers, operators to, provi to be provided the visibility, knowledge, and control they need to achieve their operational goals. I now want to turn things over to Kyle. He'll be talking, uh, talking about how they've implemented uh, Traxxas and bringing us through a live demonstration so we can see how they've levered, leveraged Traxxas to digitize their operation and optimize processes in their facility. Kyle? Thank, thank you, Corey. So again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just one quick note before we get into the actual demo. Uh, internally here at Premier, we tend to refer to our jobs or production orders as projects. So you may hear me use those three terms interchangeably. So as you can see here, uh, we're, we're in Chrome and this is our implementation of Traxxas. And right off the bat, we're gonna start on the left here under our manufacturing tab. And what you'll see is you'll see some value streams over here. Now, we've laid them out specifically according to our areas and how the product flows through our shop. So you'll notice OEM panels or our original equipment manufacturing panels, some custom panels, Square D panels, which is specific for us for, for a particular customer, and smart cell panels. Today, we're gonna to specifically focus on smart cells. So when we go into that smart cell page, you'll see all of our projects listed. Now on the left, you'll see the, the name of that particular project. For us, we wanted to highlight what that Q2C, or in this case, what, what's called essentially a PO. And then to the right of that, you'll see a description. Now, previous to Traxxas, our technicians down on the floor, their only visibility was looking at a stack of folders, either in the leads office or sitting over next to the parts that would eventually be made into those panels. With Traxxas, they now have that visibility to see all the current jobs that are in front of them and what they're gonna be working on next. Now to the right of that, they have a nice quick snapshot of what inspections were completed on that particular project. So you'll see our pre-test inspection, final inspection and packaging inspection. This gives them very quick visibility if the three inspections or one of the inspections or even two were completed previous to them starting this step on that particular day. So we're gonna go in to this project. And once we click on that project, you now see all the steps that that, that particular project can go through. Now for us, we needed flexibility. So our technicians can click on any step at any point. Now in other situations, as Nick mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, you can imply or create any business rules and enforce a specific sequence if needed. In addition to having that flexibility here, we also have some more details for the technicians to view. So you can see that Q2C or PO number again. You have the quantity of panels in that particular order. Now with the inspections before where you just had a green check, you can see if it's not completed or if it was completed, the actual date that it was completed on. So now we're gonna move into an actual step. In this case, we're gonna to go to our test checkout step. And now we've moved into our cockpit. Now with this screen, this is gonna encompass everything our technicians need to know about a particular order. And as, they as we click through, you'll see other screens that they can access that enable certain pieces of information as they need them. So we're gonna just start this job. And it'll process. So now we've started that job and you'll notice that start button turned into an interrupt button. That allows them to stop that particular step at any point. Now, in addition to that, you now see some links underneath the inspection steps and a couple other things that were grayed out on that previous cockpit screen. So with this, they can now click onto any of these inspections and either start a new inspection for one that hasn't been completed, or if they failed that particular inspection at a previous point, they're able to click on it again and redo that inspection. Before I click over into the labels and barcodes, I just wanna highlight 
a very critical aspect that Andy talked about in his previous questions. So prior to Traxxas, our operators had no indication of where they stood in terms of completing an order, nonetheless a particular step on that particular project. With Traxxas, we're able to now highlight how much time they have, in this case, two hours for this particular step. And as time progresses, they'll see a bar that initially starts out as green and eventually turns red if they exceed or meet that particular time limit. And so they're able to see this at any point throughout the day on their, on their personal tablets. So now we'll click into labels. And for us, these labels used to be something that our team leads would go into an Excel spreadsheet, type out the particular part number, type out the serial number, and then create however many particular uh, labels they needed for that particular project. Print it out, place it into the folder to then be delivered later. Now, our technicians can come to the screen and right at the point of use at their benches, print it out on a printer, and they're able to get those labels right there. So as I mentioned earlier, it reduced quite a bit of that upfront admin time and it gets them the point of use right on the spot. So we're gonna return back. And now we're gonna look at our barcodes. So this is another aspect that our team leads created this in Excel. They had to format this every single time, again, place in specific serial numbers and the part numbers and print these out ahead of time to be used at an inspection step. Now, this wasn't a requirement that we placed on ourselves. This was a customer-based requirement because they provided a certain piece of test equipment that we needed to test their panels with. And so rather than having to print out this sheet and scan at that particular piece of test equipment, they're now able to take their tablets, come to this screen, and scan the barcode right off the screen. So not only are we saving the time and having to set up this step, we're also saving paper. And it's just another cost or fringe benefit that we've seen with this. So we'll return back to our cockpit screen. And so now we'll, we'll interrupt this step because we're gonna move over into our shipping step. So we'll hit interrupt, we'll hit end. And so now we'll go to pack and ship. And so now underneath pack and ship, we'll come in here and we can click pack and ship and this allows us to now actually ship the product within Traxxas. And this does a couple of things for us. A, this won't actually let me ship this particular project because we've error proofed it to where you need to have all three inspections completed prior to shipping within Traxxas. Secondly, it allows us to track down to the date and time when we actually planned on shipping and what we actually ship the product out of our, out of our site. Now, for smart cells, we don't ever ship parcels just due to the small quantities on the POs that we receive. However, on OEM, Custom, and Square D, there's always the possibility that a customer could, or could order 20, 30, 40 panels and ask for them to be delivered at certain time periods, so maybe two panels a month. With Traxxas, we're able to track each individual shipment and tie it back to our traceability, which we'll get to in a few minutes. So next we will go into our grouping screen. So I imagine many folks on the line uh, are always looking out for opportunities for setup reduction or setup efficiencies. And so it's no different here in our panel shop at Premier. If we run like product, we try to gain as much efficiencies as we can by running three or four projects at the same time and doing the mechanical assembly or electrical assembly at the same time. And so for us, we needed a way to make Traxxas not cumbersome from the starting and stopping job standpoint and still gain those efficiencies that we had previously. So we were able to create this screen where we group projects. So we'll walk you through an example. So if we wanted to group these two projects together, you can see they're highlighted and we'll click group. And now if we scroll to the bottom, we've now grouped those two projects together. Now previously, where if we wanted to start those, we would have had to start two separate jobs we can now go to this specific job and start at once. Now for us, this is a, a very critical piece. Um, and this plays into a couple different aspects, specifically our timesheets. So as I mentioned in the, pre, in the questions previous to the demo, we were able to use Traxxas to transfer our time automatically from what used to be our labor recording system and transfer it directly into our ERP. 
and thus reduce some of that time. And so Trax is, is taking our entries of time and pushing them over. And with this grouping function, it allows, it allows to be a lot quicker and reduces a lot of those errors that we used to see where you may have two hours on one job when in reality you only spend an hour and you spend an hour on the other job as well. So next we're gonna move into our serialization. And as I mentioned earlier, we use the underwriter, underwriters laboratory uh, for panels. And what you can see here is you'll see our UL serial number, the panel name, our internal serial number, the date shipped, our customer, and then our internal project and a PO number if applicable. Now, what I'd like to highlight on this screen is this used to be in an Excel spreadsheet. And with any Excel spreadsheet, it, you have opportunities to, to lock it down, but it does introduce a lot of opportunities for error and inconsistencies. And as we move through the process of relocating that Excel spreadsheet into Traxxas, we actually found quite a bit of errors and inconsistencies across the board. And so by moving this into Traxxas, we are A, able to reduce those errors, make it more consistent, but also B, reduce the amount of time that our folks were managing that Excel spreadsheet. Now, the other piece of that is we no longer have to go to that Excel spreadsheet and update it with certain pieces of information. As we complete these actions in Traxxas, it updates this log automatically. And specifically, the one I'm, I'm referring to here is the date shipped. So as product gets shipped, that date and that time get automatically recorded into this log. Now, with anything, you know, errors can be made, especially when assigning manually uh, to some of the projects. And so we do have the built-in ability to change a panel serial number, or remove it from a UL and reassign them. And that's all built-in functionality. Now, the other aspect to that is the ability to add notes to a particular line. So I'm gonna scroll down and show you an example of what a note might be in here. And so this can come in particular handy, A, for our folks internal to Premier managing the log, and it's also useful for audits. So because it is the underwriter's laboratory, they do have to complete routine audits of our log. And so we're able to make notes in here that our auditors can then refer to the next time they come back in and immediately know where they left off from their previous audit. So just another feature that is useful uh, with Traxxas that was not necessarily uh, done previously in Excel. So next, I'm gonna move into some management reports. So previous to Traxxas, we had paper inspections. All of those inspections were completed on the paper and then sent along to the customer. This prevented us from tracking and recording those inspections internally and basically creating a database. With Traxxas, we were able to keep that database and be able to refer back to that. And so this, this has become particularly useful with customer complaints or even internal errors where we might catch it before it goes out the door and being able to go back and trace it and understand what occurred and what might have caused that problem to begin with. And with Traxxas, you're able to build in a lot of filters here to make it a little bit easier to go back. So rather than have to search through an entire log, you're able to put start and end date and filter on specific customers, specific area manufacturing value streams, or even a particular inspection. So now that we have this ability to track our inspections, this actually gave us the opportunity to create or utilize another KPI that wasn't being previously utilized. So I'm gonna hand it over to Andy to tell you a little story about how the first time write report came about. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so first time write is something that we really didn't have the, the tools and bandwidth to implement with a paper system. And as we moved this process into Traxxas, we wanted to um, CI, you know, continuously improve our ability to measure our performance. And so first time write or first pass yield are often referred to in this case, but understand what are we finding before we make corrections and it goes out the door. Uh, what you see here in this um, window that we're tracking is really a very, very high performance and um, just the visibility of it, um, as we've just been implementing it over the past month, 
helped me understand that we really didn't do a good job of, of training and fully un helping people fully understand the, the process. And so just in the past couple of weeks now, we've gone back out and retrained on the expectations for the inspection being, um, the, the errors being left and then a new inspection being uh, added and revised so that this metrics uh, can be useful to us. Thank you, Andy. So this is just one example of a report that we have, but obviously the possibilities are endless. So the last, last management report that I'm gonna show you is one that arrived to or came to fruition based upon a need of one of our team leads. And so as we were going through the process of understanding what the critical points were and where we needed to upload into Traxxas, we came upon a whiteboard in one of our team leaders' offices. And what we found was they were tracking all of the open jobs and their status, and their status pertaining to whether or not the customer was invoiced and whether or not the customer had paid. And so, again, once again, there's a lot of opportunities to uh, create an error or, you know, by mistake, mark something incorrectly. And so that process was just not a very robust process. And so we were able to take and basically transfer his methodologies into Traxxas and create this queue that allowed him to track which projects have been invoiced, which projects needed to be uh, followed up on with the customer to ensure payment. And this was just a very quick and easy tool for him to utilize, and it prevented something from getting erased, you know, simply put, um, or something falling to the wayside. So again, just another tool that came came out of some heartburn and some issues that was able to find a home here in Traxxas for us. Now, the last piece I'm going to show you is our dashboards. So we created a dashboard that would create the visibility that Andy and his team were looking for. So again, allowing those technicians to see where they were falling down or where they were doing well even. And so just to highlight on here, this shows all of the current jobs that are being worked. So it gives you the details of the project, it gives you the detail of the step, as well as it gives you the details of how many technicians are working on it. So due to the flexibility in our particular shop, we could have two or three people working on the same step on the same project all at once. And so to the right of that then totals up their time. Now a couple of examples here, you can see they're way under, they're looking pretty good. They're on, on track to the actual standard that they're meant to hit. The, the folks working on this particular project, test checkout, they've exceeded their time. And that's why it's showing up in red. And they now know how much time they've actually spent on it. In this particular case, just shy of 21 hours. So very visible and very much out there on the shop floor as we've put up a, a big screen TV in our shop. So very easy for Andy or anyone else to walk through and actually see the status of how their folks are, are doing. Now, the last piece of this dashboard is our inspections. And what we've done is we have the ability to see the total amount of inspections completed, as well as the amount of inspections that have failed. And as you can see from this particular example here, we had one fail, and that fail turned this tile from green to red. Again, providing that visibility for Andy or any of the team leads to immediately know, is there something wrong? Is there something I need to go take a look at? Or do they need assistance to get something corrected? So again, utilizing those, those visual cues through Traxxas. So we, we hope you enjoyed our demo. Um, obviously we've implemented quite a few different things on here, but this does not exhaust all the possibilities. And so with that, I'll hand it back over to Corey. Thank you again, Kyle and Andy. We really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through the demonstration. It was great to see how you were able to create a digital solution to optimize your operations with Traxxas. So in today's presentation, we saw some applications of production, quality, and performance management, as well as traceability and compliance. But because Traxxas is a unified manufacturing operations management system, it allows organizations to use its features and functions to quickly deploy a variety of powerful solutions that fit your specific processes as well as your business needs. So we're now at the point where we wanna open up the conversation and address any questions you may have. 
please feel free to type in your questions. We'll do our best to, to answer as many as we can in the time remaining. So we have a couple of questions already uh, uh, coming in. Um, the first one I'm going to give to Kyle. Um, what was your approach to designing this solution? Sure. So, A, when we, when we started to look at this solution and, and Andy brought us in, you know, it, it, we needed a commitment from both Andy and his team. And so from that, from that standpoint, we wanted to take a very lean approach. And so we started out with value stream mapping the shop. And A, that was to help us understand their processes, but as well start to get some of that buy-in from Andy and his team. And from that, we were able to identify most of the functional requirements and get additional opportunities for future CI, knowing that we weren't gonna be able to complete it all at once. Uh, once we had those functional requirements, we prototyped out some of the, the screens and the interfaces, and then we held reviews with both Andy, his immediate leadership team, as well as quite a few of the technicians to A, gain some alignment, and B, get their buy-in as we move forward with the project. Thanks for that. The, the next one I'm gonna direct to Andy. Uh, was the approach used to design your track system installation effective? Um, yeah, the way I would answer that really, I'd look at, you know, did we achieve some of our objectives uh, in terms of uh, improvements in quality and productivity? And I think you've heard that in the presentation with the labor savings and the dramatic improvement we're seeing in outgoing quality. Um, and then the other thing I look at is just usage and feedback from the team. You know, a, a team has to embrace something and go through that process of change. And, you know, some of the feedback I've gotten there from the technicians, uh, they're just very pleased to see how they're performing in real time and understand that. Um, surprised in a way that inspectors now just prefer the tablet interface to their paper systems, which is not always an easy thing to to change, but they really like that the system catches them when they forget something. And they actually like the visual of it. It's just easier for them to see. Um, the people that were involved in pre-manufacturing, as I mentioned, really were overburdened to some extent and were eager to get in place the uh, automation uh, features that we added to Traxxas. So they're very happy about that. Um, and then, you know, as a manager, I just feel more confident about how my team's performing. Um, I'm also happy to avoid surprises. You know, production order variances at the end of the month reporting are not not fun when you didn't see them coming, and it never fun. But uh, I'd much rather know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis and have that visibility. So Traxxas really has been a good platform for us to enable us to grow our business. And, and looking forward, I, I can see we can continue to grow with really not adding as much overhead as we would have to otherwise. Great. I got one more question. If others on the line have any other questions, feel free to enter them into the uh, into the question portal on the right side. the The next question is, uh, you know, can you give us an idea of of the implementation uh, time frame? How long did it take to get up and going with the system? Sure. So uh, this is Kyle. So I can talk into that a little bit. Um, it took us it took us about uh, three to four months to really kind of lay out and go through that process. Again, we wanted to use that lean process to get all of our functional requirements. Now, in that four months, we were able to lay out four different phases that we wanted to go through. And once we've gotten through that and really gotten into the, the meat of actually creating the screens, we've been able to get through those first two phases within that first four months. And so it, it took a little bit of time, but now that we've hit that, we're, we're really hitting our stride and we expect the next two phases to go by pretty quickly within the next month to two months. Excellent. Well, thank you gentlemen for, uh, for answering the questions and thank you to everyone who's joined us. We're about to wrap things up. So thanks again. Just for a reminder, the answers to these questions uh, and any that we get after will be emailed out to you. If you have any questions for the Parsec team or Premier System Integrators, feel free to utilize the email addresses that are on screen. 
You can also always find out more about our platform, Traxis, on the website www.parsec-corp.com forward slash Traxis. Thanks again, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you next time.